You know, this is fantastic. The computer has been my accountant, now it's provided me with my French teachers, and if they talk too much, I can merely turn them on. But there's one thing I don't understand. How does a computer do it? Do what? Well, if I wipe its memory clean every time I turn it off, how does it know how to load a cassette or a disc when I turn it on again? But you don't wipe everything out of its memory when you turn it off. You mean it forgets some things and remembers others? Precisely. The computer has a memory that you can change and a memory that you cannot change. Two quite different sorts of memory, in fact. A computer is really just a collection of switches that can either be on or off. When we feed messages into this maze of switches, what we're doing is getting them to form various temporary patterns of ons and offs in the computer's memory. But we can't do this to all the switches because some of them have already been organized into preset patterns before the computer leaves the factory. These switches are stuck and they consist of permanent instructions on how to load programs, how to print things on the screen and so on. The computer can read this left half of its memory, but it can't write on it. It can't change it. It is therefore called read-only memory, or ROM. But the computer can, in a sense, write on the other half of its memory. This half is called random access memory, or RAM. Because the computer can write temporary messages anywhere it likes here, it has random access to this part of its memory. But if you switch the computer off and then on, the messages in its random access memory disappear. The loose switches are scrambled once again, whereas the instructions in the read-only memory stay as before. The switches are still stuck in the same position. Of course, you don't necessarily have to program messages into RAM yourself. You can load a ready-made program full of messages into it from a cassette or a disc. You can take the cassette or disc away and the messages will remain. But naturally, if you turn the computer off and then on, once again, the messages will disappear. But at least you've still got the originals on your cassette or floppy disk. So ROM is read-only memory, and it's permanent. It never forgets. Whereas RAM is both read and write memory, and it's temporary. It forgets at the flick of a switch. ROM and RAM. ROM and RAM. ROM wasn't built in a day, so it's here to stay. And RAM is here today and gone tomorrow. Exactly. You've got it. So that the contents of RAM come from the outside, whereas the contents of ROM are already in the computer. Is that right? By and large, yes. But you can add extra ROM to some computers by using a ROM pack. A ROM pack? Open the lid at the top of the Atari and pull the cartridge out. All right. That's a ROM pack a way of extending the permanent instructions in the Atari. There's no magnetic material inside, as in a cassette or disc, just a chip with extra ROM memory on it. So, this is information for ROM, and this is information for RAM, is that right? That's it. 